Hello there and welcome to this project. We're going to dive right into it today and start off with all the hardware you're going to need to follow along and do this project too. You're going to need a stepper motor. Let's make that four. A spindle motor. Spindle motor controller. Tiny G board controller. Power supply. You need a 24 volt and a 48 volt. You're going to need a plug connector for that and might as well draw a wiring diagram and USB cable to hook the tiny G to your laptop. Power cords, wires, wires. Yeah, you're going to need some wires too. So here's the highly sophisticated wiring diagram. And uh, you should always just draw your own diagram just to give yourself a chance to uh, see what you're doing there. And this is the wiring diagram for the power entry module I'm going to use. Here I am wiring it up. I'm using some crimp-on blade connectors I happen to have that fit perfect on the back of this power entry module. Wiring these right into the power supplies. This is the 24 volt on the left, the 48 volt on the right. This uses just a regular power cord like you would use for your computer or anything else. Uh, note of caution, you can electrocute yourself with those open leads, which I did do once. Just be careful. If you're a kid, ask your parents for help. So let's just check and see. We're getting both the voltages we need, 24, 48. So far, so good. OK, let's move on. And we're just going to speed through the rest of the assembly here. Lots and lots of wiring. You can get plenty of information online to show how to connect all of these components together. So I'm not going to go in that here, but there will be some links in the description. So we got everything organized on the table, ready to go. Stepper motors, tiny G board, spindle, spindle speed controller, power supplies. Now that we have everything hooked up, let's go ahead and try to make the motors move. I finally have the tiny G hooked up by USB to my MacBook here. And I have Universal G Code platform downloaded and installed. Let's see what happens. So far so good, no smoke. Now we're going to try and connect. It says we're connected. Let's go ahead and give a command about G0X1. Let's try again. Well, the one I have labeled A moved. Uh, let's go ahead and get those fixed up real quick. That's a simple mistake. Okay, we got those relabeled. So it turns out motor 1, 2, 3, 4 is X, Y, Z, and A. Who would have thought? That was an easy one to fix. We changed the labels. Let's try and make these move now. So let's give a command X2, Y2, Z2, and A2. Looks like everything's going pretty good. Uh, we'll give a combined G0 command, send them all back to zero. X0, Y0, Z0, A0. And everything looks great. So far, Universal G Code Sender is talking with the steppers correctly. Now the, uh, the ratio of one inch, two inch, some of these things are gonna have to be set later, but for now, I'm really happy. Things are going just great. Let's see if we can make the spindle motor move. I have a Torx wrench chucked in right here to the collet, which I really don't recommend, but we'll see what happens. I recommend taping this down. The very first time I turned on this spindle motor, it started up in the on state and started going all over the table, so uh, maybe you want to tape that down. So it should just be an M3 command for this guy to turn on. Let's see what happens. Okay. Maybe not such a good idea with something offloaded here. See if we 
can get some of that chatter out. M3. Looks good. Now I didn't even give it a speed. Let's say S100. No change. S10,000. I can hear it speeding up. I'm pretty sure the RPMs are not correctly and I need to have these set. But the speed commands are working, which means the PWN command from the tiny G board to the spindle speed controller is working correctly. So again, we'll slow it down, S100, M5. Now we'll go ahead and try to send it the other way with an M4 command, counterclockwise rotation. So as of right now, when I give an M4 command, the spindle is still going in the clockwise direction, and I'm not sure why. For these purposes, I probably will only need the spindle to turn clockwise. It looks like there's a relay for spindle direction on the tiny G board, which I'm not going to be using. So I'm not sure if we can send it backwards counterclockwise or not using the PWN control. But that shouldn't be an issue for me right now. So pretty happy, everything moves. Universal G-code sender successfully communicating with the four steppers on a four axis system and the spindle motor, which it can turn on and off using the tiny G board and universal G-code sender. Okay, now let's back up and think about again why we are making the CNC machine. The whole point here is that we're gonna be able to go from a model in a Fusion 360, generate code using the CAM part of the software, and then taking that to the Tiny G controller and machining an actual object using our CNC machine. So we're gonna back up just to make sure we can actually do that and go all the way from a model made in Fusion 360 to code that's usable by Universal G code on the Tiny G. So what I have here is I've just modeled a uh, block. There's nothing special about it. It has an extremely long, skinny hole. We're going to go to the cam section of the software. And I have made a helical bore toolpath on this, which we'll go ahead and simulate real quick. Now this is a ridiculously long end mill boring a hole using a helical pattern which is completely useless to do in reality. But it gives us something to move at least three of the axes in a way that we'll be able to watch and see. So everything looks pretty good here. Now we're going to go to post process. Now one of the great things already on this project is that Fusion 360 does have a post processor specifically for Tiny G. We're going to post this out to our desktop. And it looks pretty good. So now we have code. It's a little over 150 lines long. So we're going to go ahead and take this back to our uh, CNC hardware and see how it works. And by the way, how do you like this new office space I have here? It's not organized yet, but it's really going to give me a chance to look very professional and just have a really adult image. Okay, now we're back at the CNC setup. We're already connected to the tiny G board. We've got Universal G code already open. Now all we have to do is go find that file that we saved using Fusion 360. Looks like it's open. Uh, let's just see what happens. I'm going to hit play. Moving into place. The spindle started up. Really pleased with the way the interface looks on Universal G Code Sender. Shows the uh, helical bore toolpath. You can see animation of everything going. Uh, I don't know how to use this interface much, but I'm really excited about getting familiar with it. Just running through the rest of the toolpath here. It's not super smooth. You can see it kind of pauses after every half arc or so, but 
It's not bad considering the cost of the system, which everything here, not counting the computer, of course, is less than $500, which is pretty impressive. Not to mention that all the software used is completely free. Universal G-Code Sender and Fusion 360 I'm getting used for free. Uh, it's just a really great time in history to do projects like this. Um, all the stuff that we have available now. The machine itself is going to use a lot of 3D printed parts more than likely. I might use some other rigid materials like MDF board or maybe some extrusions or steel tubing or something like that. We'll see. Let's go ahead and speed up, get to the end of this program. So at the bottom of the pocket, you should see Z stop moving, X and Y finish the very bottom layer. And now the tool is retracting back out as Z backs all the way out again. Apparently it has pretty far to back out. So the only issue I had is at the end of this, the spindle did not stop. Uh, Fusion 360 didn't put an M5 command at the end. It's not a big deal. It's not going to be a problem moving forward. So far, everything's working great. Stay tuned to see where I'm going with this and see what this little controller can do.